Okay, so starting over. Um, we use equal when numbers are the same. We use congruent when shapes are the same. There we go. Uh, okay, so some examples of when we would use an equal sign. Uh, a, a very basic example, 5 equals 5. That's true, isn't it? Okay, so the number on the left side of the equal sign and the number on the right side of the equal sign, uh, those are the same. Uh, another example would be um, like 12 inches equals 12 inches. Okay, another obvious one because um, they're exactly the same. They even look the same. Um, we could also say 5 equals the square root of 25. So here's another use of the equal sign where the, what's on the left and what's on the right don't necessarily look the same, but they still have the same value. So um, if, if we were to simplify both sides, then they would look the same. We could also say something like 24 inches equals 2 feet. Okay, that would be another proper use of the equal sign uh, because those are measurements or quantities uh, and we use equal sign to say that quantities are the same. All right, so you guys have been using equal signs for probably, what, 10 years now? Um, you know what they mean, right? So the term congruent is used when two shapes are the same. And, and we're going to be a little bit more specific about exactly what that means. Um, but essentially, when two shapes are the same, they have the same shape and they have the same size, and we call them congruent. Um, so for example, we might say that, what? Somebody read that for me. Terrence? Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it's equal to... Nope. No, it's not. Uh, That's not an equal sign. Uh, I, like, I remember what it was. It's, in, like, the it's, it's right there. Uh, here, let me help you out. It's this word right here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this symbol right here means congruent. So we would read this, line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD. What that means is, I have two different line segments, but... If I took one of them and laid it on top of the other, it would match up perfectly. It would look identical to it. Uh, and, and that's what the idea of congruence is. Um, so that right there, that symbol, that is the congruent symbol. All right. Um, the picture might look like this. Uh, when we're talking about congruence, pictures are usually good because we're talking about shapes. Um, so we have two different segments. And the idea with congruence is we could take this line segment, pick it up, move it over here on top of this line segment. We'd have to spin it a little bit, obviously, and they would look the same. Okay, They would have the same shape, they'd have the same size, um, and so they are congruent. Um, we would mark congruent segments, um, just kind of like we, we mark parallel lines, we can mark congruent segments uh, to show they're congruent. Okay, so this is a definition that you need to have written down. This goes on the back of your note sheet. Two segments are congruent if and only if they have the same measure or length. Because we measure a segment by measuring how long it is, right? Uh, we saw this sentence structure yesterday with the definition of supplementary angles. We said two angles are supplementary if and only if they add up to 180. You guys remember that? Um, the idea here is if, in, in this case, for this definition, uh, we use the if and only if, which is a biconditional. Um, we say if and only if, so that, that means if I told you that two segments are congruent, then you could conclude, you could tell me that, okay, they, they're the same length, they have the same measure. Or if I told you that two segments have the same measure, then you could conclude that they are congruent. All right, Stephen? Can you get your head up from me, please? Thanks. Okay, so here's, here's what the definition looks like written out mathematically. Um, this would be a good thing to write down also because it looks so fun, right? You guys remember the double arrow I showed you yesterday? The double arrow says that it works both ways. Now, notice that in the definition, on one side I have a congruent symbol. On the other side, I have an equal sign. That's kind of cool, huh? We just talked about that. Write it down and then I'll tell you what it means. Okay, so what this definition is saying is if I tell you that segment CD is congruent to segment EF, so we're saying that the two shapes are the same, then 
if I know that, then this is true. And what is that saying? Anyone want to guess? That one? No? Good try, though. Steven? Lines can't be equal. Okay, so we have to understand a little bit of the notation here. Um, CD without a line over it or without a line segment over it or without a ray sign over it. Um, CD by itself, this right here, is actually talking about the length of CD. So if I draw a picture here of what's going on, um, here's line segment CD. So one end point we have C, at the other end point we have D. Over here, this is talking about the line segment itself. It's talking about this shape. This right here, CD, that's talking about the length of CD, which is why I got my meter stick out here. Um, if I want to know what this is, I actually have to measure it. So I could take this, I could put the zero at one end at D and measure it here, and it looks like it's about five decimeters. You guys know what a decimeter is, right? No. no. What does deci mean? Deci means a tenth. So a decimeter is a tenth of a meter. So, yeah, a decimeter would be a tenth of a meter. So it's about five decimeters or half a meter. Okay? So this right here is talking about the length of segment CD. Does that make sense? So the length of segment CD, five decimeters, is equal to the length of segment EF. So how long is EF going to be? The same as CD. The same as CD, which was? Five decimeters. Okay, let's say 50 centimeters. Does that work better? Steven, is 50 centimeters better? Okay. All right. So here's what the picture might look like. Um, I've got a, a little clearer picture here. Um, so when we're talking about congruent segments, we'll have two, two segments that look alike. Um, they might be going in different directions. They're in different places, but they have the same length. Um, does anybody know what we do to mark segments so that we know they're congruent to each other? We're not going to use arrows because that was for parallel lines, right? Yeah, we're just going to use little tick marks there. Um, I'll, I'll call them tick marks. So those green marks that I have on there, this mark right here and this mark right here tell me that these two segments are congruent to each other. So this definition is useful because if I were to give you a picture like this and then tell you that segment EF is 5, well, let's go 50 centimeters, then what can you tell me about segment CD? It's also 50 centimeters. Okay? So they're, they're both the same length. If I didn't put the marks there, um, let me back up here. Let's say the marks are not there, but I told you they're congruent. I'm sorry, and you don't know they're congruent, but I told you that this is 50 centimeters and this is 50 centimeters. Are those two segments congruent? Yes. Okay, so this is going the other way now. This is saying we know that they have the same length, they're equal in length, so that means that we know they're congruent, and then therefore we could put our little tick marks on there and say they're congruent also. Does that make sense? So the biconditional works both ways, and, and that's, um, that's why they're so powerful, because they can do a lot for us, twice as much as just a regular conditional. Okay, another definition. The last definition was telling us what congruent segments look like. This one tells us what congruent angles look like. So two angles are congruent if and only if they have the same measure. Man, this looks a lot like the last one, doesn't it? <clears throat> If you look at the definition for congruent segments and the definition for congruent angles, what's the only difference in that definition? Yeah, instead of two segments are congruent, we say two angles are congruent. Um, how do we measure an angle? What kind of tool do we use to measure an angle? I, I use a ruler to measure a line segment, but I can't use a ruler to measure an angle. Okay, that would be the units. Do you know what kind of tool I use? Instead of using a ruler, I could use...
protractor. We can use a protractor. Now, we can use degrees on one side. This protractor has radians on the other side. You guys won't talk about radians until you get into analytic trigonometry, which sounds really exciting, doesn't it? Um, you can worry about that later. We won't do that in this class. All right, so algebraically, here's what that definition looks like. So in the last one, we had the symbol for a segment here. So we had two segments congruent to each other if and only if their measures were equal. Uh, it's the same thing here. It's just a little bit different notation when we're talking about angles. All right, so speaking of notation, what does this symbol right here mean? Angle, angle right? Um, so we have angle A is congruent to angle B. Does anybody know which part of the angle gives it its name? The corner, the corner or the vertex. vertex, yes. So angle A would have uh, point A at its vertex, and angle B would have point B at its vertex. So this says angle A is congruent to angle B, if and only if. What do you think this M stands for? Measure. Measure, yes. Um, so if and only if the measure of angle A, so if we measure it in degrees, uh, Whatever we get for the measure of angle A is going to equal the measurement of angle B. So again, we have another definition where we have the congruent symbol on one side, and we have the equal sign on the other side. Um, so here's a picture of what that might look like. Notice that one of the angles has A at the vertex, the other angle has, angle, has B at the vertex. Um, and I've mentioned this before about congruence. Basically, what we could do here is we could take that angle A, pick it up, move it over on top of angle B, and it would match up just right. Does anybody know how we mark angles to show that they're congruent? So we marked segments to show they're congruent with tick marks. How about angles? Steven, you know? Can you show me that you're awake? Darwin? A little thing? Yeah. Uh, you put little arcs in there. Um, so those arcs in the angles tell me that they're congruent to each other. Uh, a lot of times we'll, we'll deal with some situations where we have uh, more than one set of angles that are congruent. So if we need additional symbology, which I don't think that's actually a word. Oops. I didn't want to do that. Um, but if, if we need... Um, to show that angles are congruent but not necessarily congruent to other ones, we could put tick marks on the angles themselves like that. So that would show that those two angles are congruent to each other. Um, or we could use a double arc or a double tick mark um, so we can get kind of creative here. But as long as we have the same symbol inside of each angle, that means that they're congruent to each other. Um, it's useful to have more than one way to do it, though, because we might have some angles that are different uh, than other congruent angles, but still congruent to something. Um, okay, so just like the last one, if I tell you that these two are congruent, or I have them marked as congruent, and then I told you that this is, let's try to get this close here, I'll go ahead and measure it, uh, this is a 70 degree angle, actually it's about 68, so we'll say that this is a 68 degree angle, then what do I know about this angle right here? It's also 68, right? Now, if I don't tell you they're congruent, but I told you that this is a 71 degree angle here, and this is a 71 degree angle here, then what do you know about those two angles? They're congruent. Okay, so if you know they're congruent, then you know their measures are equal. If you know their measures are equal, then you know they're congruent. This is fun, isn't it? Just what you want to do right before Labor Day weekend. Hey, at least we don't have to talk about it Monday, right? All right, so next definition. Um, I didn't write this definition as a biconditional for a few reasons. Uh, the biconditional can get a little bit hairy with this. Um, so we'll just kind of define them and look at what they are. You need to be able to recognize these. Um, and one of the first theorems that we're going to prove will involve vertical angles. So vertical angles are the angles opposite each other when two lines intersect. 
So if you just draw two lines that cross, any two lines that cross, the angles that are opposite from each other are called vertical angles. We saw those in our opener, right? You guys remember the vertical angles from our opener? Um, so those two angles were formed when two lines intersected and they were opposite from each other. So vertical angles are going to look like that. Now, I would normally have to concern myself here because I just mark those angles to show that they're what? Congruent, right? Because they have the same arc in them. Um, normally, I wouldn't want to do that, except I do know that these two angles are congruent to each other. Um, there's a theorem, and, and like I said, one of the first theorems we're going to prove is, involves vertical angles. There's a theorem that says if two angles are vertical to each other, then they have to be congruent to each other. Um, so... You can mark them in here to show which ones they are, but you can also mark them the same because they are congruent to each other. That would be a good thing to write down, in fact. So the next definition is adjacent angles. Uh, they are angles that share a vertex and a side. Um, again, you could write this as a biconditional. This this will suffice for us right now, though. Um, so there's two conditions here that have to be met for angles to be adjacent. They have to share a vertex, and they have to share a side. And, and we'll look at some pictures here in just a second once you have this written down of some angles that are or are not adjacent. All right, so those two angles that I have marked there, First of all, notice that I put different markings in there. They're not congruent to each other, so I didn't want to put the same mark in there. Um, are they adjacent to each other? So let me ask this. Do they share a vertex? Is the vertex in both of those angles the same? Yeah, the vertex for both of those angles is right there. Do they share a side? Where? Which side do they share? Do they share this side right here, or this side right here, or this one here? They actually don't share a side um, because, well, you've got the one angle here and you've got the other angle here. Um, they don't share a common side. So they're not adjacent to each other because they don't share a side. Okay. Um, how about these two? These two do share a side. These two share this side right here. So does that make them adjacent to each other? No, no why not? They don't, share a they don't share a vertex. Or as Logan said, a vortex. <laughs> so they have two different vertices. They are not adjacent to each other either. Okay? Nah. How about those? I hope that one's obvious. They share neither a vertex nor a side, so they are not vertical. I'm sorry, not, they're not vertical, but they're also not adjacent. Um, so I know you guys want to see what adjacent angles look like. Those two angles right there are adjacent to each other um, because they have the same vertex right here, and they have the same side right here. They share that side. Now, I want you to notice something about vertical... I keep saying vertical, sorry, about adjacent angles. If you take the side out that they share, what do they make? If, if I were to just erase that side, I'll just color it red so it's kind of hidden. Uh, I take this side out, what do, what do we have left? Yeah, one angle, right? One big angle. So we can add adjacent angles together, or we can put them together to form larger angles. Um, and that's going to be a, actually a pretty important concept here coming up. Um, but if we take out the shared side, since they shared a vertex, we just end up with a bigger angle. Does that make sense? Okay. Big green check mark. That is, those angles are adjacent to each other. All right. So adjacent angles that form a straight line are called a linear pair.
We saw a linear pair in the opener also, um, where we had two two angles put together to form a straight line that, that gives us a linear pair. So a linear pair is going to look like that. Notice again that those two angles are adjacent to each other because they share a vertex right here and they share this side that if I get rid of it we just end up with a bigger angle. In fact the angle is so big that it's what we call a straight angle. So we talked about um, we talked about five different angle relationships on uh, Thursday, yesterday, and then we added two more today. We added linear pair and vertical angles today. Um, so my question then is, of those seven relationships total, I want to know which angles are congruent. So remember our options were, um, and I'm not sure if I have them on here. So when the lines are parallel, let me see if I've got them on here. I might just be giving away the answers. Yep. So vertical angles are congruent. You already wrote that down. Uh, so list that over on the left under the column where it says which angles are congruent. So vertical angles are congruent, which means, for example, angle 1 is congruent to... Somebody said it. Oh, no. Vertical angles. So when we're talking about vertical angles being congruent, we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Or we could say angle 6 is congruent to 7. Okay, you guys recognize those vertical angles? All right, uh, what other relationship do you think are congruent? Of the ones that we talked about yesterday. So we had corresponding, we had same side interior, same side exterior, alternate exterior, alternate interior. Which ones look like they're congruent? Let's look at corresponding. That angle right there, angle 1 and angle 5. Does it look like angle 1 and angle 5 have the same measure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's true when the lines are parallel. So as long as the lines are parallel, then we know that corresponding angles are congruent to each other. How about same side exterior angles? Does it look to you like angle 1 and angle 7 are congruent to each other? No. no. In fact, I think it's kind of obvious. Angle 1's an obtuse angle and angle 7's an acute angle. You guys remember those terms? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so one's obtuse, one's acute, so they are not congruent to each other. So we'll throw those aside for a second. How about same side interior angles, 3 and 5? No, again, 3's acute, 5's obtuse, that's not going to work. Um, how about alternate interior angles, angle 3 and angle 6? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, those are congruent to each other. Let's see if that's the next one. Yep, alternate interior angles are congruent to each other. And there's one more that's going to be congruent, anyone want to guess? Alternate exterior, exactly. So of the 7 angle relationships we've talked about so far, these 4 are going to be congruent when the lines are parallel. And that, that's important. If those two lines were not parallel, then the corresponding angles, the alternate interior angles, the alternate exterior angles would not be congruent to each other. Okay? So, just something that's going to help you remember this. Um, all of those angle relationships, the angles are either congruent to each other or they're supplementary, which means that they add up to... 180. Okay, so the angles that are supplementary. The first one I think is kind of obvious. Now, you may not at first, but let's look at it. Um, the one that we talked about today is a linear pair, and the linear pair angles add up to 180. Can anybody explain to me why those two angles add up to 180? Terrence? Okay, yeah. Um, so they they come together to form this straight line, right? Um, and the measurement of a straight angle or a straight line is 180 degrees. So if you think about it, as Terrence just said, they form a half a circle there, so that's going to be 180 degrees, um, and they are supplementary. So um, two angles that form a linear pair are supplementary to each other. Um, and then that leaves the two other relationships that we didn't get in there, um, which are what? What?
what are these two, right? Uh, hold on. Angle 1 and angle 7, what are those? Come on. Same side exterior, yes. So same side exterior angles form uh, form supplementary angles. And I think this one you can kind of visualize. If you just move the two lines together, if you took this line here and you moved it down to where this line is, then those two angles would actually form a linear pair, wouldn't they? You guys see what I'm talking about? So the same side exterior angles are going to add up to 180 because they're essentially a linear pair that's been split up. Uh, so same side exterior and, um, I got ahead of myself here, but same side interior angles also are supplementary. 